Hey y'all. So I wasn't able to film outside today. Um, I got everything ready and went to the park, one of my favorite parks. And um, it started out a beautiful sunny day. And um, as soon as I got out there, got set up and was almost finished with my last notes <laughs> before filming, all the clouds had rolled in and the wind had picked up. And um, I just remember last time I was having to turn the, the pages in the book and I was also having to grab the, the camera and try to <laughs> keep it from falling over. So it was, um, it was kind of a challenge. And not to mention the sound quality from time to time with the microphone and how the wind would, would interfere with that. So um, I just wanted to be out today. And so I'm, I feel like I'm still out. <laughs> um, it's, it's certainly not my favorite studio to be in my Jeep, but that's okay. So uh, we're gonna roll with it. And um, today I wanted to close, um, finish up chapter three, uh, which again is in the book, Women Who Run With the Wolves. And uh, I've already got two other videos if you haven't seen them on chapter three. And this is the third and final video on chapter three. And again, the title is Nosing Out the Facts. The retrieval of intuition is initiation. And what we started with was going through um, the notes from the author on the main story in this chapter. And so um, that was to prepare our minds and to get us in the right mindset um, to actually <clears throat> absorb the story a little better. So that was the intention. And um, today we're actually going to go through the story. And I'm not gonna read it word for word, but I am going to be sharing the most important elements with you. And uh, because I do encourage you to purchase the book, it is available on Amazon. And um, then uh, after we go through the story, I'm gonna go back through um, the breakdown that the author has. And we just lightly went over what she calls the tasks. She breaks down um, her notes from the story into tasks um, that that the girl, the main character in the story, was supposed to learn from the experiences in the story. And so um, I just lightly touched on this before. And today I want to go into a little bit more of, of the author's notes that are underneath um, each task. And I think that it's gonna really help us get a good understanding of the life lessons that come out of this story. So I hope that you enjoy today's presentation. And um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully you can get the book and follow along with me. And um, I'm sure that if you have a desire to read it yourself, and then um, afterwards, like um, going through the chapters with me, you could, um, you know, listen to these videos. If you have that interest in learning about um, the lessons learned from being entangled with a narcissist, then that's the lens that I'm looking at at this book um, through. And um, that's a big part of our discussion when we're going through this book. So hopefully that will be very useful for you, right? Because we want to operate in the world, not, um, not, as naive individuals, but as wise people with um, growing discernment day by day. So, okay. So the the story in the book is called Basilisa, and um, and again, the way that that the author writes is beautiful. It's so poetic and descriptive, and there's really no substitute for that. So um, I just want to mention that. But basically, there was a young girl. The story opens up with a young girl who is um, with her father and her mother. And her mother is dying. She's in her deathbed, on her deathbed. And um, this is the last interaction that the little girl has with her mother. And um, she gives her daughter a doll. And um, it's very important. And it's, it's fashioned... Um, just like the little girl, so it's almost like a little mini version of the girl, the way the doll um, appears. And so, um, her mother says, these are my last words. And she says, should you lose your way or be in need of help, ask this doll what to do. You will be assisted. Keep the doll with you always. Do not tell anyone about her. Feed her when she is hungry. This is my mother's promise to you, my blessing on you, dear daughter. And then, um, and then she passes away. So Vasilisa is left with the doll from her mother. And um, she mourned her mother 
um, for a long time and um, her father remarried okay and so now she has a stepmother and she has two stepsisters and this this reminded me of Cinderella you know the stepmother and the stepsisters that were very cruel to her so I feel like a lot of these um, age-old tales that have these hidden life lessons to teach us kind of overlap with each other the different stories I think the themes and sometimes the messages and lessons are um, similar if not the same within all these different tales so I just want to mention that but so he remarries and so now Vasilisa has a stepmother and stepsisters okay and um Basically, they didn't like her, just like in Cinderella. They um, they just had a very um, holier than thou, condescending attitude toward her. And um, it says right here, which Vasilisa's father did not perceive. So that reminds me of that that covert narcissism because he was married to this woman and she hid it so well. Um, all of them did, and and her daughters too hid their their disgust for Vasilisa so well that her father didn't didn't recognize it didn't pick it up so it's a battle that you fight alone um, because these people wear masks so well and um, and then of course if you try to tell somebody what's really going on behind closed doors they're gonna look at you like you're crazy or they don't believe you or you know so a lot of us can relate to that so her dad didn't see what was truly going on okay all right, and then of course it says when the three women were alone with Vasilisa, they tormented her. Um, they forced her to wait on them, sent her to chop wood. Um, it says so her lovely skin would become blemished. They hated her because she had a sweetness about her that was otherworldly. Um, she was very beautiful. So they were, um, it says she was helpful. Vasilisa was helpful and she was uncomplaining. Um, so it says one day they just couldn't stand her any longer and they it said this is interesting okay it says let us conspire to make the fire go out which i think has a double meaning right they're they're talking about a literal fire in the house but but again we have that fire inside so think of that so let us conspire to make the fire go out and then let us send vasilisa into the forest to baba yaga the witch to beg fire for our hearth. And when she reaches Baba Yaga, well, old Baba Yaga will kill her and eat her. You know, kind of like Hansel and Gretel. There's that theme there in that story. So it says, they, oh, they all clapped and squeaked like things that live in the dark. You know, they were just so evil and cruel. So it says, so that evening when Vasilisa came home from gathering wood, the entire house was dark. And she was very concerned and she addressed her stepmother and says, what has happened? What will we do to cook with? Um, and what will we do to light the darkness? And of course, the stepmother's like, you stupid child. Obviously, we have no fire. And um, she makes excuses, says she's too old to go out into the woods and her stepdaughters can't go out there because they're too scared. So she puts it on Vasilisa to go out into the woods. Um, and it says, um, go out into the forest to find Baba Yaga and get a coal to start our fire again. So that's her assignment. Okay, it's it's a trap. It's a trap they're setting for her. Okay, so um, innocently, you know, she's so she's so innocent, Vasilisa, and she says, "Well, all right, yeah, I'll do that." And uh, and so she goes into the woods, and it's really dark, and it talks. It's very descriptive and, and poetic about her experience going through the woods, trying to find her way um, to Baba Yaga's house. And it talks about how she has that doll that her mother gave her in her pocket along the way, and um, you know she's not really sure where to find Baba Yaga's house. So. Um, she's relying on that that doll which is symbolic of her of her intuition to tell her which way to go and it talks about that you know uh, the doll indicated yes or no as far as should I go left or right um, this way or that way and Vasilisa fed the doll which again is symbolic um, some of her bread as she walked and she followed what she felt was emanating from the doll so she's trusting her gut her intuition as she's navigating the woods all right so, um, and then there's a lot of symbolism in the story from here on out. You know, all the different things that happen. It talks about um, a man in white on a white horse galloping by. And then right after that, a man um, in red on a red horse. And then the sun rose. 
Um, so it's a very rich story. Got some music blaring around us. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, and then, uh, and then there's a rider dressed in black on a black horse, okay? And that one rode right into Baba Yaga's hut. So, and then of course, that kind of brought in the night time. And so, it describes Baba Yaga's hut, and it's really interesting. Remember, she's, she's a witch, right? Like a Hollywood kind of uh, witch. And she said, it's, it says, um, the fence made of skull, skulls and bones surrounding the hut began to blaze with an inner fire. So the clearing there in the forest glowed with an eerie light. Um, and again, it reminds me of that Hansel and Gretel. Um, and it says, Baba Yaga was a very fearsome creature. Um, she traveled not in a chariot, not in a coach, but in a cauldron shaped like a like a mortar which flew along all by itself and it's just she's just terrifying it goes into um all these um you know descriptive factors about this this witch and um i mean literally just um you know a tiny white goatee and you know warts on her skin and her brown stained fingernails and um <laughs> it's just it's so interesting to read this description. And then it says even more strange was her house. It's, it sat atop huge, scaly, yellow chicken legs and it walked all by itself. And sometimes it twirled around and, and around like an ecstatic dancer. Um, and then it's like super scary. It says the bolts on the doors and the shutters were made of human fingers and toes. And the lock on the front door was a snout with many pointed teeth. So it's just one of the most terrifying things. It's just like a fairy tale, you know, very exaggerated. And then, um, so Vasilisa looks at her doll and she's like, is this the house that we seek? And the doll, it says in its own way, which is interesting because sometimes our intuition speaks to us in, you know, very subtle and yet at the same time, powerful ways. I thought that was cool. So the doll in its own way answered, Yes, this is what you seek. Now, notice, Vasilisa says, is this the house we seek? But the doll answers, yes, this is what you seek. So, it's kind of like Vasilisa thinks in, in her naivety that she's going to seek Baba Yaga at her house. The doll is basically saying, you're going to get something. This is what you seek. I'm not saying it's necessarily the coal. That, that's truly, you know, that's, that was stated as your mission, you know, cause she thinks she's going to retrieve, to get a, a piece of coal for the fire, you know, back at the house for her stepmom. That's what she thinks she's going for. But the, the intuition, the doll says, yeah, this is what you seek. So I thought that was cool. You know, like she's going to get a whole lot more than a piece of coal from this, from this experience and this visit. Um, and so, um, of course, Baba Yaga's like, you know, what do you want? And she's really cruel and mean and harsh. And, um, <laughs> and Vasilisa trembled. She's, she's scared. She says, grandmother, I come for fire. Grandmother, grandmother, I come for fire. My house is cold. My people will die. I need fire. And so Baba Yaga snapped at her and she's like, oh yeah, I know you and your people. And she says, you useless child, you let the fire go out. Again, double meaning, you let the fire go out because that is exactly how it feels after spending a lot of time with a narcissist, right? That's, that's their whole point is to kill your spirit, to kill that, to snuff out that fire inside of you, that spark inside of you, the light inside of you. It is a spiritual battle. You're, you're housing the light. They see this. They see this. And they're on the opposing team because they're you know, they're, they're working for the darkness and, and, and using you, um, abusing you, harming you, all the things they do. So, Baba Yaga says, you let the fire go out. All right. So, then it goes on and it's just the coolest story, truly it is. And I can't do it justice without reading it directly. Um, and so, okay, this was cool. It said, Baba Yaga says, besides, what makes you think I should give you the flame? And Vasilisa consulted her doll and quickly, re quickly replied, because I ask? And Baba Yaga purred, you're lucky. That's the right answer. 
So, um, and Vasilisa was like, oh, she feels so lucky <laughs> that she, she truly had the right answer. So, um, then, then Baba Yaga basically says, I can't give you the fire. I can't possibly give you the fire until you've done work for me. If you perform these tasks for me, you shall have fire. And then it says, if not, and here, Bob, and here Vasilisa saw Baba Yaga's eyes turn suddenly to red cinders. If not, my child, you shall die. So again, just a deeper meaning there. If she can't find the fire, if she can't rekindle that fire, she shall die. Okay, so, um, so then she just gives her all these tasks, you know. Um, it says, uh, Oh, and she, she's, you know, Baba Yaga's eating these, these huge meals, and she's just giving Vasilisa crumbs, um, and it takes her several days to get all these tasks done, and there's lots of symbolism in the tasks, and, um, of course, it's not something that's, you know, bullet point, everything is, is, you know, drawn out in the story in detail. I don't think that's really necessary, because I want to go, I want to spend a lot more time, um, beyond this story, um, really breaking it down with you. And I also want to try and keep this not too long. We're already at 16 minutes, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into all the details of the tasks. But basically, um, she says, wash my clothes, sweep the yard and the house, prepare my food, and separate the mildewed corn from the good corn, and see that is, that everything is in order. And I'll be back to inspect your work later. If it's not done, you will be my feast. And so she flies off in her cauldron, and um, you know. <laughs> Vasilisa's like, okay, like thinking, how in the world am I going to do all this? So, of course, she consults her doll. And as soon as, you know, the Yaga had gone, and she's like, how, what do I do? How can I complete these in time? And the doll assured her that she, she could get all this done and to just eat a little bit and go to sleep. So, um, so she did. And uh, again, it says Vasilisa fed the doll a little too, and she slept. So, um... It says, in the morning, the doll had done all the work and all that remained was the meal to be cooked. And says, in the evening, the Yaga returned and found nothing undone. Pleased in a way, but not pleased because she could find no fault, Baba Yaga sneered, you are a very lucky girl. And then um, she calls on, this is interesting. It says, she then called on her faithful servants to grind the corn and three pairs of hands appeared in midair and began to rasp and crush the corn. It says that the, the um, chaff flew in the house like a golden snow. Finally, it was done and Baba Yaga sat down to eat and she ate for hours and ordered Vasilisa on the morrow to again clean the house. Um, sweep the yard and launder her clothes. So she's really, you know, taking advantage of this situation, this poor girl. But notice that, that on that first day when Vasilisa woke up, the doll had completed the tasks. And um, I think we're going to get into this in a little bit, but I'll go ahead and mention it here. That's kind of like when you put that request in, like you're trying to make sense of something that seems foreign to you, like the way that other people operate, such as a narcissist, um, who, when they're lying to you, but you know something's wrong, but you can't put your finger on it kind of thing, and you're just trying to figure things out. It's one of those things where, you know, a lot of times if you're just really thinking on it and you can't find the answer, you go to sleep, and then in the morning the answer either came to you through the night in your dreams, or the answer just comes to you. Um, and it's um, just a higher processing in our minds, and I think the intuition plays a big part in that, and I think that's the point of what that was about there. So then she goes into, um, you know, poppy seeds um, and piles of dirt, and she wants everything separated out in the yard. I mean, it just seems impossible. These tasks are just um, so detailed, and um, and just feel overwhelming to Vasilisa. But the doll tells her, she's like, don't worry, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And so she, again, um, Vasilisa tried to pick out the poppy seeds from the dirt. And after a little while, the doll says, just, just go to sleep. All will be well. So, um, that higher processing, sometimes we just have to surrender. You know, we do what we can to, to understand things and to learn and grow. But um, there's the higher processing that, that takes place after a while, too. I'm sorry, I'm seeing something out there. I'm not real sure what that is. So, um, okay. So, so she just keeps 
excelling. She keeps, you know, um, Baba Yaga gives her all these tasks and she gets them done and she gives her more and she gets them done. So, um, you know, finally it says, um, Vasilisa says, may I ask you some questions, grandmother? And the Yaga says, ask, but remember too much knowledge can make a person old too soon. Um, and so she asks about the man on the white horse and the Yaga says, um, that first is my day, and then the red man on the red horse, and that's my rising sun, Yaga says. The black man on the black horse, and the Yaga says, that's the third, and he is my knight. And um, Vasilisa says, I see. And then uh, Yaga says, well, come on, don't you want to ask more questions? And um, Vasilisa was about to ask about the pairs of hands that appeared was so strange and then disappeared but the doll began to jump up and down in her pocket you know and so it's like the intuition saying no 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 just just leave it alone so Vasilisa said no grandmother as you yourself say to know too much can make one too old too soon so um Yaga says you are wiser than your years my girl and um so it goes into, oh, Yaga, the Baba Yaga says, um, how did you come to be this way? And Vasilisa says, by the blessing of my mother. And of course, Baba Yaga screeches and she's like, blessing, um, blessing. We need no blessings around this house. You know, you best be on your way, daughter. So again, they're calling each other grandmother and daughter. And so she just pushes her outside. She's like, get out of here, man. Like we're done. And so um, she says, I tell you what, child, here. Baba Yaga took a, fire, took a skull with fiery eyes from her fence and put it on a stick. She says, here, take the skull on a stick home with you. There, that's your fire. Don't say another word, just be on your way. So Vasilisa began to thank the Yaga, but the little, little doll in her pocket began to jump up and down again. And so she realized she must just take the fire and go. So she does. And um, so she goes through the woods and um, you know, she's carrying this, this skull with this fiery light inside. And, you know, she, it was kind of scary. <laughs> so she talks about her being a little bit scared of it. Um, and it says she thought about throwing it away, but the skull spoke to her. She thought about throwing it away, but the skull spoke to her and urged her to calm herself and to continue toward the home of her stepmother and stepsisters. And it says, um, <laughs> So as Vasilisa is getting closer and closer to the house, her stepmother and stepsisters are looking out the window and they see this strange glowing, um, strange glow dancing through the woods. It's coming closer and closer and they're just thinking like, what in the world is this? And you know, we sent her after Cole. And, um, cause they, they had honestly thought she had been gone for days. It says, um, they thought she was dead by now. <laughs> And so Vasilisa gets closer and closer. And it says, as the stepmother and stepsister saw it was her, they ran to her saying they had been without fire since she left. And no matter how hard they had tried to start one, it always went out. Interesting. So they weren't able to, to keep that fire. And so it says, Vasilisa entered the house feeling triumphant for she had survived her dangerous journey and brought fire back to her home. But the skull on the stick watched the stepsisters and the stepmothers every move and burnt into them and by morning it had burnt the wicked trio to cinders i personally feel vibes about the meaning of that being related to um possibly their conscience because she she totally, you know, they set this trap for her. They set this trap for Vasilisa. And she took she took on the challenge. And she, despite her fears, and she came out triumphant. And it, it was kind of like the light, um, you know, the darkness can't exist in the light. You know, and the Bible talks about that. And so Vasilisa is, is, um, is like holding this mirror to them. And it's, um, it just... It's like a spiritual battle here. And so, um, whether they ever really had a conscience or not, even in the end, I don't know. But I feel like when confronted, when confronted with the truth, narcissists are, are mortified. They're terrified. And it's sort of like a, not just an ego death, but like the worst kind of ego death. 
you know what I mean? And I think that possibly it could symbolize something like that. I'm just processing with you. So giving you things to think about, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into the tasks. Um, we we kind of touched on the tasks last time, but this time we're gonna go into, um, you know, now that we've, we know the story, we're gonna go into um, a little bit more. So the first task says, allowing the too good mother to die. Remember that was the beginning of the story, her mother passed away. So it says, in the opening of the tale, the mother is dying and bequeaths to her daughter an important legacy. It says in the tale, the, initi the initiatory, initiatory process begins when the dear and good mother dies. She is not there to touch Vasilisa's hair anymore. In all our lives as daughters, there is a time when the good mother of the psyche, the one which served us appropriately and well in earlier times, turns into a good, too good mother, one which by virtue of her safeguarding values, begins to prevent us from responding to new challenges and thereby to deeper development. So heavy, so heavy. In the natural process of our maturing, the too good mother must become thinner and thinner, must dwindle away until we are left to care for ourselves in a new way. While we always retain a core of her warmth, this natural psychic transition leaves us on our own in a world that is not motherly to us. But wait, this too good mother is not all she seems, she at first seems. Under a blanket, she has a tiny doll to give her daughter. Ah, there is something of the wild mother underneath this figure. But the too good mother cannot completely live this out, for she is the milk teeth mother. The blessed one every baby needs in order to gain a toehold in the psychic world of love. So even though this too good mother cannot live beyond a certain point in a girl's life, she does right by her offspring. She blesses her with a doll, and this, as we see, is a great blessing indeed. Oh yes, to make sure that your, your children are made aware of the evils in the world, the darkness in the world, and, you know, making sure that they're not going to wind up, you know, falling into all these entrapments because they're naive. I mean, that's important. It says this dramatic psychologic dwindling of the mother first occurs as a girl moves from the fur lined nest of pre-adolescence to the jolting jungle of adolescence for some girls however this process of developing a new more shrewd inner mother the mother called intuition was only half completed then and women so inducted have wandered for years wishing for and wanting the complete initiatory experience and patching themselves up as best they could this is heavy stuff it says, this arrest in a woman's initiation process occurs for various reasons, such as when there has been too much psychological har hardship early in one's life. There's been no consistent good enough mother in the early years. And so these are the reasons why somebody may enter the world as an adult and, and, and still be very naive. Um, the initiation may also be stalled or uncompleted because there is not enough tension in the psyche. The too good mother has the stamina of a formidable weed and lives on, waving her leaves and overprotecting her daughter. Even though the script says, Ex exit stage left now. <laughs> in this situation, women often feel too timid to proceed into the woods and resist it all they can. So, um, just incredible deep stuff right here about um, developing that intuition and awareness about the darkness. So the second task is called Exposing the Crude Shadow. In this part of the tale, the bad, rotten step family marches into Vasilisa's world and begins to make her life miserable. And so it says, the stepmother and stepsisters represent the undeveloped but provocatively mean elements of the psyche. They are shadow elements, meaning aspects of oneself, which are considered by the ego undesirable or not useful and are therefore relegated to the dark. Shadow material can be very positive, for often a woman's gifts are also pushed into the dark, but negative shadow material can also be useful, as we shall see, for when it erupts and we finally specify those aspects and their sources, we are made all the stronger and wiser. In this stage of initiation, a woman is harassed by the petty demands of her psyche, which exhort her to comply with whatever anyone wishes. 
Compliance causes a shocking realization that must be registered by all women. That is, to be ourselves causes us to be exiled by many others. And yet, to comply with what others want causes us to be exiled from ourselves. Man, it is a tormenting tension and it must be born, but the choice is clear. So, um, it reminds me of um, someone uh, brought brought to my attention at some point fairly recently it was really interesting um how sometimes you know like when you're out in public and you know you're just having a decent day and you're just going about your way and you're trying to live a positive life with a positive mindset and you're passing by complete strangers these people could be you know like crazy mass murderers like they could they could be anybody these strangers you don't know they could be great people who knows and so um what was brought to my attention was the fact that how often it's like it's self-awareness really it's like how often um do you just immediately respond to a prompt if somebody smiles at you or speaks to you in passing around you just immediately smile with without being safeguarded you know what i'm saying without that awareness um without that um without being guarded whatsoever and that reminds me of this and that's that's so important to stay aware of that because i think when you're conditioned um, throughout your childhood to to just um basically live in a manner where you know you're not in control of yourself but you you know this overly dominant parent or parent figure is is so demanding of you and uh, that you you may have been wound up being conditioned to just comply without questioning things, without checking in with your gut, without being guarded. And that, that's part of what makes you naive, a big part of what makes you naive out there and, and could make you a target, you know, as people are testing you in this manner. So I was so thankful of um, that that was brought to my attention. And so this reminded me of that in this story here. So it says we are we too are pinched off I guess I should have I should have highlighted more before that <laughs> it says um, let's see I don't know maybe it'll make sense we too are pinched off when the step family within us and or around us tells us we are not much to begin with and insists we focus on our shortcomings rather than perceiving the cruelty whirling around us, um, be it within our psyches or without in the culture. However, to see into or through something requires intuition and also the strength to stand upon what one sees, because it, it can shake you up when you actually come face to face with some, you know, crazy, true, real darkness in this world. Um, like Vasilisa, we may try to be nice, just like the smiling incident. We may try to be nice when we should be knowing. We may have been taught to set aside acute insight in order to get along, just like I was talking about being conditioned. However, the reward for being nice in oppressive circumstances is to be mistreated more. Um, although a woman feels that if she is herself, she will alienate others, it is just this psychic tension that is needed in order to make soul and to create change. So just some things to think about, you know, I think it's really important to stay true to yourself. Um, hold true, holding true. So Vasilisa does the everyday chores in the story without complaint. To submit without complaint is heroic seeming, but in fact causes more and more pressure and conflict between the two oppositional natures. One too good and the other too demanding. Like the conflict between being over adaptive and being oneself, this pressure builds to a good end. A woman who is torn between these two in a good way, but she must take the next steps. In this story, the stepwomen so squeeze the psychic force that by their machinations, I think, the fire goes out. At this point, a woman begins to lose her psychic bearings. She may feel cold, alone, and willing to do anything to bring back the light again. This is just the jolt the too nice woman needs to continue her induction into her own power. One might say that Vasilisa has to go meet the great wild hag because she needs a good scare. We have to leave the chorus of detractors and plunge into the woods. This is so heavy. There's no way to both stay and go. 
So it's all like this um, internal um, maturity and development of our discernment, you know, essentially, and, and our self our self awareness and self control to keep us from being targets um, of manipulators out there. I mean, through the lens of you know of the lessons from narcissistic entang entanglements, right? Growing from that. Um, Vasilisa, like us, needs some guiding light that will differentiate for her what is good for her and what is not that discernment. She cannot develop by standing around being everyone's bootjack. Women who try to make their deeper feelings invisible are deadening themselves. The light goes out. It is a painful form of suspended animation. Conversely, and perhaps somewhat perversely, when the fire is put out, it helps to snap Vasilisa out of her submission. It causes her to die an old way of life and to step with shivers into a new life, one which is based on an older, wiser kind of inner knowing. So, we're already at 35 minutes. Just to break this up, I'm going to go ahead and end this one, and then we'll actually wind up having um, four videos to complete Chapter 3. I hope that you got something out of this. Thanks for joining me. And uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and just and immediately film this, this um, fourth video as well for you. So, it should come out very soon. Um, if, if you see this one published and not the other one, it'll, it'll be out very soon following. So, thanks again. And uh, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. And um, I would love it if you wanted to subscribe. And you can always hit the bell to be notified when I post new content. Thanks so much for coming along with me on this path. And I hope you have a great day. See you soon.